Welcome back. Now, the COVID-19 lockdown has been a harsh experience for many and has revealed how tolerant and accommodating we are of each other, especially within our small family units. Now, being alone together has become a stress test for spousal, parental and other close relationships. Now, managing this stress has become priority as we can't see the end of this lockdown anytime soon. Now, Dr. <laughs> Bojubola Babalola is a consultant psychiatrist, managerial psychologist, and a medical director of Tranquil and Quest, um, Tranquil and Quest, right, a mental health and substance abuse recovery center. She is a mental health advocate and influencer who is driven by the holistic view to health with a passion for research in child adolescence, women, mental health, and occupational mental health. She's always lent her voice to advocate their cause. Now remember, you can join the conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Waze Show Africa one with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Babalola. Thank you for having me. Let me call you Dr. Babalola. <laughs> Your other name. <laughs> I'm trying not to bite my tongue. It's How okay. are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How okay. are you too? Very well. I, I give God all the glory. <laughs> <laughs> We're still sane. Mm. We're still saying now. Um, it is very, very apt for us to talk about relationships, especially with the lockdown. You know, it's easy. We were just talking earlier on. It's easy when you have to do use a lot of activities to cover up your your day. But since the lockdown started, everybody's forced to stay within a space, stay within the home, and all of that. And we're beginning to hear of cases of um, suicide abuse depression. and all of that, depression, domestic violence and all of that. So generally, what's your overview, you know, when it comes to the health status of most relationships? All right. So thank you for the question. I think I'd like to start by saying that, you know, um, 2020 started with a bang. Everybody was expectant. We didn't know what to expect, but we're hopeful. And then boom, <laughs> there was COVID-19. <laughs> yeah, right. COVID it was unprecedented, it's a significant stressful life event that no one and nothing prepared us for. Like I often say, no person, no economy, no nation was ready for what we have on ground. And you know, unfortun unfortunately it's now, um, you know, culminated into a lockdown which is, is stifling to say the least. The pandemic on its own has its own stress. The lockdown, the restrictive lifestyle, the boredom, the uncertainty, the continuous news, the numbers, the deaths. Hmm the health conditions, the poverty rates, everything is staring us in the face at the same time. Mm. So, you know, we have so much in the mix and it's so diff difficult to, you know, try to take one out every, at every point in time. Then talking about health, it's important to say what the WHO says <laughs> health is. Most people would say, uh, I haven't been sick in 10 days, 10 months, it means I'm healthy, but WHO begs to differ because the definition of health is a complete state of physical, mental and social well-being and then of course because we talk about mental health specifically mental health is a successful performance of your thoughts emotions cognition and other aspects of your behavior if you are mentally healthy part of what you will do is be able to have thriving relationships with other people be mm. productive and of course cope with the normal stresses of life like you have highlighted that has been tested right now because we are in each other's faces we're in each other's space Unfortunately, a lot of people used to, um, you know, use work to get out of the house, use work to cope, use work as an escape. But unfortunately, all of that is crumbling right before our eyes. So it's a, it's a tough place to be in. It's very difficult. And of course, in the news, we've also found that the rates of even domestic violence at this time, significantly, you know, sexual and gender-based violence has gone up, even in Nigeria and even in other developed countries. So relationships have suffered and may continue to suffer as all of this continues. Mm. So um, I was reading a report by CNBC and it says that lawyers expect a rise in divorce after after this isolation period. Uh, case in view currently ongoing in China since March, the divorce case has risen by 30% and a lot of them are newlyweds. Some of them giving their reasons as irritation, domestic violence, like you mentioned, and some of that's just saying, I realized I just don't like you anymore. So what, what, how do we manage um, this happening? What exactly is the core issue? Is it that they didn't really know themselves or what is, what was the causing factor? Well, so 
honestly, we may not be able to put a finger on what it is exactly, but mm -hmm. it would be nice to say that the courses may be multi-dimensional. So it may be, you know, individual courses, it may be, you know, the partner, it may be the community, it may be, why did they even get married in the first place? <laughs> Was it that they were really attracted to one another? Was it for benefits that they were looking for? And, mm -hmm. you know, many times people don't understand what those relationships are about, especially because we had other things at different times to distract ourselves. So mm -hmm. work, shopping, outings, mm -hmm. all of which are not there right now. So unfortunately, you know, people are faced with each other. They're faced with, um, you know, a personality that you probably did not know or did not even understand or did not even right. appreciate before you then, you know, got married to this person or you start to see, you know, behavior or attitudes that you could have sworn that your partner did not have. It's, mm -hmm. it's different when you're with, you know, someone for three hours as compared with being in the same space with someone for 24 hours. You know, interesting that you said that because I was reading a research, I mean, by, that was carried out by a professor, Gab. I just Googled you know, and I saw this research. He said that working couples, mm. that they spend about 150 minutes together per day yeah. while awake. And it, within the 150 minutes, 50 minutes is used to, to spend on, um, what's it called, TV time. Yeah. So we have 24 hours yeah. in a day. And this is how much working. So now there is no work. There is nothing that takes you, you're within that space. And all of a sudden you're just realizing that I cannot... So where is this coming from? Well, um, it's coming from us. It's always been there. But the reality is just hitting deep now. So ordinarily, you know, with what you said, um, I work, my husband works, we wake up in the morning, we don't even do breakfast, we don't do lunch. No. The only meal you do together at dinner. the end is dinner. And most likely you're going to do dinner in front of a TV. And before you know what happens, you drift off to sleep again. It's the, you know, we, it's the 21st century. We call it the VUCA world. It's volatile, uncertain, complex, mm -hmm. ambiguous, risk-filled. It was so fast-paced. We used to complain about our busy, busy, busy lives. And we used to wish, you know, how, that we had time for one another. But the truth is, a lot of people cannot cope with the reality that mm -hmm. they don't know. Mm -hmm. I love what you just said. So it tells me now that if I truly want to spend time, I have to create that time. Oh, definitely. Because it was not a function of whether there was no time or yeah. not. Now you have all the time yes. in the world <laughs> and there's, you are not using the time yes. for anything. Instead, yes. you're beginning to irritate each other. Yes. So, but there's another flip side. Let's even leave, because um, we're not um, concentrating so much on marriage alone. Yeah. Singles. Yeah. Getting Singles are, you know, according to even the research, Jima was saying that, you know, they normally would not be perceived as being vulnerable in this situation. Well, you see, singles are alone, mm -hmm. they are lonely, yeah. and they don't have any, you know, before they could go hang out with their friends, have dinner, they can't do all of that now. So it's, there are more, there's a, an increase in, uh, what's it called, um, online relationships. And he was saying, even the research I was, I was watching this evening was on, um, what's it called, people buying dogs. Yeah. People are now ordering for pets and all of that, because all in the name of looking for that companionship. So how do we even help the singles in managing this lockdown? Because they're all alone. Okay, well, so, I mean, I would say that one of the ch biggest challenges of the 21st century is loneliness. It's a big deal. It's, a, it's such a big deal that even in the UK, they have a minister for loneliness. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> wow. There is a minister for loneliness. And loneliness is, you know, many times looked at, especially when you look at if you had, you know, if you were in a bit of a problem and you needed someone to reach out to, would there be somebody to rise up to you? Mm. Would there be someone to get up when you needed something? So that's the loneliness index. And I mean, over there, it's, it's a big problem. It's equated to as much risk as um, obesity would cause, smoking cigarettes would cause, and other physical illnesses as well. So loneliness has been there. And over time, what people have tried to do is cope. Cope, but what people are also doing is that they're coping maladaptively. People are looking for attention in all the wrong places. And it's the reason why, you know, you'd go online and people are doing all sorts of things just to be appreciated or appear to be appreciated, to be validated. Mm -hmm. People are turning to alcohol, cigarettes, and other illicit substances of abuse. So it's a big problem because many people cannot even, they can't appreciate their own, Self. their selves. Being by themselves. They so, can, you I, know, yes, they can't appreciate yeah, being I by themselves. Really they enjoy their own company pretty much. You know what, um, Sansi, we have um, Nathaniel Ayodeji on Skype. You would come with your question to him. Nathaniel Ayodeji is a crisis intervention manager and therapist in Mental Health Foundation. 
He's also the PRO of the Nigeria Psychological Association. Is he there? Natalia, are you there? I'm here. Oh, okay. If you can hear me, good evening, Nathaniel. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good evening. Okay. Um, have you been listening to our conversation? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Do you want to add a, a few things before Sansi comes with her question? Well, uh, as the doctor said, I'm sure you're hearing me. Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, this season had uh, asked a, a, a lot of um, negative effect in some families or relationship, especially when the foundation is not well set right, as she said. And um, beyond just loneliness, I, I, will, I will say, um, one of the things that we also have to look into is um, changes uh, in behaviors, uh, which leads to frustrations, situations that leads to frustration, let me say. Okay. People are not actually, people maybe um, uh, they are surrendered with situations which are not planned for. And, and this naturally we breed, uh, you know, stress. And when people don't have a good knowledge on how to manage this, it tears the, you know, uh, um, relationships apart. Yeah. Especially when the foundation is not well set. Absolutely. Mm. Okay, so I mean, I hear what you're saying, and I think you make absolute uh, valid points about uncertainty bringing stress. It is absolutely true. I completely agree with you. However, doctor was saying something on uh, we're talking about singles before you came up. So I, I, I um, there is this belief that spending more time alone has a strongly negative impact on 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 individual happiness. Do you agree? And if you don't, why? Uh, yes, I agree. Okay. Because human beings are social beings. Yeah. We, we are created to interact with others. As such, when you now confide people alone, there is tendencies to breed other, you know, intrapersonal issues, trauma within. So it's very important that People learn to relate well, especially single at these days. You know that, uh, uh, for instance, I have um, some um, clients I'm working with. Um, I made a call through last week. How are you coping on all that? Silent, or oh, why are you silent or oh, quiet? What about your mom, your sister, and all that? All of them are in their room. So, who are you relating with? So I'm always chatting on the social media. That's another a, a way as which he feel better way he can she can cope because most people who have not even disciplined their mind, nation evolved vacuums. A lot of thought flows into the mind, and you will know how to control it when you're alone. So you it can also even lead to further psychological distress that's why important you have people you can relate with better which actually help to promote you know good mental health thank you thank so you. much nathaniel that was really yeah. really insightful okay so we'll take a quick break i will still have dr babalola here with us and we'll link up with titi lola vivo adini via skype please stay with us we'll be right back